All right, question six was the make me these dicarbonyl compounds from a single hydroxyaldehyde. And I had given the hint that you need to pay attention to how many carbons are in the chain because it changes for most of them. The only case where we don't end up adding carbons to the chain is letter A. That's the only one with three carbons in it. Only three carbons in it. The others have all extended the chain one or more carbons. There's a couple of different ways to do each one of these. So, in that respect, it was a bit of a bad choice because I don't like having questions with multiple possible answers. But, we'll go through what I know will work and then talk about maybe some things that might. Okay, so, here we are. So, first point, this is a three-carbon chain. So is this. So that's the only one that's direct functional group into conversion without having to add carbons. After that, this is a five carbon chain. So we're going to have to add two carbons to that chain to get it done. Same thing here. Last one is a four carbon chain. So we're only adding one carbon to that one. So we can think about what we've already talked about in terms of adding carbons to a chain. Um, we can use a Vitig to an aldehyde that adds one carbon, or potentially more than one, but definitely one. Uh, we could use an alkyne on some sort of sp2 reaction, on sort of sn2 reaction, which adds two carbons. We could potentially use an epoxide, since we need an oxygen on the, on the last carbon. We could open an epoxide to add two carbons, potentially. So there's a couple of possibilities here. Um, so... I'll go through ones that will definitely work. What will not work in any case is one or two steps. These are all a little bit longer. Um, because we're starting with an aldehyde, I really can't do much without covering that up first. It's going to get screwed up. So, that's the case for the easy one, or the more direct one, letter A, where we only have to change the group and not the number of carbons. We're going to have to cover that aldehyde up. Then change this alcohol to a carboxylic acid and then uncover that aldehyde. So this is the only one that doesn't really have multiple ways to do it. So we're going to start with making the acetal, probably ethylene glycol, an acid. Uh, second step here, we're going to have to oxidize that primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid, so something like chromium trioxide and sulfuric acid. And third step, which might still get accomplished in the second step, we've got to be a little careful with that, um, is that we need the acetal off. So we're going to have to have acid and water here um, to remove the acetal. So, not really ideal. You probably would go with something a little different as an oxidant here to avoid the possibility of ripping off the acetal. If the acetal gets taken off at the wrong spot, well, then this aldehyde would still be under oxidation conditions and we'd end up with a diacid. That's a little bit of a hint for section for 5C, or number five, letter C here, that, um, you know, we're going to end up with two acids. That means that protecting group's not going to be there when we do the oxidation at the end. Um, so, we're still going to need that, though, as we move along. So, how are we going to do the next one? Well... I'm going to do this in a little bit different order. I'm going to start with D here, um, bottom left. So what I'm going to suggest here is that we're going to get rid of that alcohol, the, the carbonyls and acetal, again, just like we did the first time. And then we need to create a carboxylic acid. So I'm going to just halogenate that. A couple different ways to do this. We could use the chlorine if we wanted, but the bromine is going to be more reactive. Since it's a primary carbon, I don't really care which way I do this. I can either use an SN2 with cyanide, or I can make it into a Grignard and use carbon dioxide. It doesn't really matter which in this case. Either would work. So I'm just going to write one, but keep the other one in mind. Um, that I can, I can, uh, I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to use the cyanide version. And that's an SN2 reaction. The reason for that is that to hydrolyze that cyanide group to a carboxylic acid is acid and water and some heat. The benefit there is it's going to also take off the acetal. We don't have an oxidant, so we're not really worried we're going to damage that aldehyde. So, 
that's one way to do it. The other way to do it would be to say, all right, instead of that number three and four, I want magnesium to make it into a Grignard reagent, carbon dioxide, followed by acid, um, followed by acid to protonate it. I can't mark that area of the screen. Um, followed by acid to protonate it, as well as remove the acetal. So it's not any harder. Um, probably a little safer because you're not handling sodium cyanide. But in terms of mechanism, they're virtually identical. And because it's primary, it doesn't matter. We only have a really limitation, a real limitation on our choices when the SN2 reaction is limited. So if I'm doing like a tertiary carbon halogen, I can't, I can't do an SN2 on that. So the, the first method I wrote wouldn't work. But since it's primary, both methods will be just fine. Okay, next two. Um, we're dealing with adding two carbons to the chain. So if we take the same approach that we did below, step one and two are identical here. So I'm just going to say step one and two from letter D. So I'm going to take these two and use them up there. Okay. Um, well, then I can basically say, all right, well, I could say... Um, I could say, all right, let's make a Grignard reagent and then use that entire thing to, an, to attack an epoxide. I can do that. At that point, I would have the right number of carbons. So at that point, my structure would be this. I'd have my acetal. Very poorly drawn. Let's try again. At that point, my structure would be this. I'd have the acetal. Because I used an epoxide, I'd have an alcohol at the very last carbon. So then I can oxidize that to the carboxylic acid and then remove the acetal. Again, potentially problematic because of the strong acid used the chromium oxidant. It might end up getting ripped off accidentally. Um, so if I wanted to look at that, I might change the oxidant, maybe use permanganate, something that's less harsh acidic wise. Basic conditions will not take off an acetal. So I could use KMnO4 and hydroxide to get myself from an alcohol to a carboxylic acid with no risk of oxidize, of removing the, the acetal. But we'll, t we'll get into that another day. So what would I need to do the bottom case? I would just reverse five and six. I would want to make sure the acetal is off so that when I oxidize it, it absolutely gets oxidized. This, this aldehyde end absolutely gets oxidized to the carboxylic acid. Now, the point of this question was to tie together a lot of stuff, but also to show you that one precursor gives you a lot of options if there are carbonyls involved. Um, and that's just showing you what I could make as far as carbonyl groups at the end, not showing you any of the other things that we could have made from those. So once we have oxygens in place at all, particularly if we have aldehydes, ketones, or carboxylic acid derivatives, we have a pretty massive array of things we can build from that up to and including extending the chain by as many carbons as we want, basically. Um, so we have to kind of keep that in mind. Now, what do I mean by as many carbons as we want? So let's take this here. So I'm going to move this to another screen just so we can see it. So at a certain point there, I have, after steps one and two, I had this. Or if I brominated it, then after step three, I had this. Okay. Well, Here's another way I could have done it. I could have gone at this with an acetylide ion. Now I have my five carbon chain. And the settling at the end. Well, I can convert that um, to an alcohol. I can convert that to a longer chain. 
I can convert that to an aldehyde, um, which is probably what I would do here. So an aldehyde here is going to be the hydroboration reaction. Um, depending on the reagent you use, it doesn't really, you know, I'm not going to be picky about it here, but BH3 is probably not the best for an alkyne. Um, and then peroxide and hydroxide. And we'll be looking at the aldehyde on the end. So if I needed a carboxylic acid in an aldehyde, I would just then oxidize this part to a carboxylic acid, chromium trioxide, and then remove the acetal. So that's another way to go at the two that I had on the right, um, is to extend the, the chain by two carbons using an alkyne instead of using the epoxide. Either of those would work. That's not the only place where we could have options. As I said, there's two different ways to make the acid in step D here. Um, so we have quite a few options here. Again, I didn't want you to try and put down all of them. I just wanted to see that you could logically work out a way to do it. There will be a lot of different possibilities for most of these. So um, just an I, the, the question was more about showing you the power of having a relatively small number of functional groups and your ability to build out from that using what you know about them now.